Now this illustration deals when conductors and conduits and so forth are considered outside the building in accordance with the rules of 230.6. Now, for example, uh, reviewing the left-hand uh, side of this uh, uh, drawing, we see the meter base. And we've already talked about 90.2, B as in boy, 5, and 230.66, and exactly what those sections uh, state. But notice the conduits are routed on the outside of the building, even on the roof area. They're on the outside of the building, and they do not enter the building till they uh, emerge from the roof. And if they run a good distance, if we encase them with two inches of concrete, as you see uh, from the roof area, then they're still considered outside the building if they're in two inches, encased in two inches of concrete or brick. Now, notice if we have a chase, as you see, uh, the conduit coming out of the meter base and routed in the chase, then with two inches of concrete provided or more, then we're considered. And notice that chase has concrete 12 inches uh, thick. So we're considered a chase considered outside the building. But notice when we enter that building, if we have a great distance to travel, then we'd have to encase it with two inches of concrete, two inches of brick, or use a cable that would have, say, a two-hour rating or whatever the authority having jurisdiction uh, would say you'd, uh, we would have to have to enter into that building at a greater distance. Now, in the city of Fort Worth, just for an example now, uh, at the time when I was the chief, we'd let you wrap 25 foot with inside the building in rigid metal conduit or IMC without having to uh, uh, encase in concrete. Over in uh, Dallas, say, uh, you could route any distance you wanted to go as long as using rigid conduit IMC. So every city had a little bit of a different rule here, so it was a lot easier to comply with that entry rule uh, when you enter into the building. Now. Uh, notice that the mains that you see in the equipment uh, cannot be more than six foot seven inches to the handle of the overcurrent device in the on position. Then notice individual uh, breakers going out would comply with 110.22 for appliances such as air conditioners and things like that. Uh, then notice if we had a sub panel going out, 408.30 and 36 and the informational note would address that the main in the service equipment would be the main for the protection of the conductors in the panel sub panel in other words we would need a main at the sub panel working clearances as we've already been through if you've been uh, uh, reviewing the chapter 5 and table uh, 110.26a1 uh, section 110.26A1 and 2, as well as 3, along with the uh, uh, dedicated clearances 110.26, we've already uh, reviewed E. So we've reviewed uh, that, uh, that information. Then notice the concrete slab is 6 inches, and you're under that 6-inch slab, so you're considered outside the building until you emerge from the floor and the concrete slab to route to the uh, service equipment. And usually the authority having jurisdiction, if there's not a rule to let you enter further, they usually won't allow more than six foot seven inches to the height of the main, uh, which is required in 408.8a. So uh, reviewing the 230.6, also review your table 300.5. Now, uh, reviewing these sections that we've called out to you, notice the underground lateral in 230.32 belongs to the utility, and it's called an underground lateral. But if those conductors belong to the owner, it would be service conductors by definition of such in Article 100. So every section that you see in this illustration uh, should be reviewed. Notice in the figure loop, 
to the right hand side of the drawing, it talks for the maximum height of the disconnecting means to actually see the different disconnects. You would see figure 6-42 of this uh, chapter and also review very carefully 230.6 items 1 through item 6 because you would know exactly when conductors are considered outside the building and in what type of installation would they be considered outside the building due to the construction and layout of the building. But figure 6-8 just talks about conductors considered outside the building in accordance with NEC 230.6.